Hi, my name is Will Creighton, and I'm a CS PhD student at Stanford advised by Pat Hanrahan and Manisha Agrawala. Program tracing is the task of mentally simulating a program with concrete inputs to produce a concrete output. For example, to trace this program, you would mentally compute q is equal to 5, e is equal to 3, and so on. So why should we care about tracing? First, tracing is a foundational skill in CS education, as it indicates a basic understanding of programming language semantics. Students who can correctly trace programs perform better on comprehension tasks. And tracing isn't just for students. Expert programmers use tracing to understand code that doesn't match any of their existing schema. So if we want to better understand programmers, then we should better understand tracing. The thesis of our paper is that a core cognitive challenge of tracing is holding program state, like variables and the call stack, in working memory. Working memory is a psychological model of how people store and manipulate temporary information. The most famous result about working memory is that people universally have a limited capacity of so-called chunks. The general goal of our research was to quantify the different ways that working memory limits our ability to remember program state. In this paper, we have four experiments, but for now, I'll just focus on one, the relationship between working memory and tracing a straight-line program. The core question of this experiment is, what is the precise set of mental steps that a person would go through while tracing? For example, here's a possible cognitive model. First, you store x associated to 3 in your working memory. Then, you try to compute x plus 4 by looking up the value of x in working memory, computing 3 plus 4, and storing y goes to 7, and so on. One way to view this model is by looking at a person's attention over time. So this graph shows each line of code, and how that person's attention moves between the code over time. If a person reads top to bottom, it would look like this. But let's say they forgot the value of y while tracing z is equal to y minus 2. Then their graph might look like this. Here they visit z, then revisit y to compute its value again, then return to z and finish tracing the program. To test whether this model accurately describes how people trace programs, we ran an experiment where participants traced short straight-line programs using this web UI. In each program, variables are assigned to either constants or expressions. We blurred out the right-hand side of each assignment, and only showed the text when the user hovers over the line with their mouse. Then, their mouse is essentially a proxy for their attention, similar to an eye-tracking study. Here are some actual traces from participants in our study. First, we observed that participants adopted one of two distinct strategies that we called linear and on-demand. Linear is going primarily top to bottom, as hypothesized. So for example, the top middle trace is very clearly linear. By contrast, the on-demand strategy is characterized by starting at the last statement and then following data dependencies. In the bottom left graph, the participants started at b is equal to o plus s, then went to o and s and so on. As a heuristic, we classified each person's trace as linear if they visited the first line of code before they visited the last line of code. We wanted to quantify the relationship between each strategy and working memory. Our hypothesis was that a person is more likely to forget information they visited earlier, and so people tracing linearly would forget more constants, and people tracing on demand would forget more expressions. We couldn't directly observe forgetting, so we proxied forgetting by the number of times someone visited a line of code more than once. Under this model, we computed the distribution of revisits. In this graph, the x-axis separates each strategy, linear and on-demand, and the y-axis shows the average number of revisits per node type. Within a strategy, the colors differentiate revisits to lines with expressions, in blue, or lines with constants, in orange. The results showed that between the two strategies, participants were equally likely to revisit constant values, but more likely to revisit expressions in the on-demand case. This is somewhat consistent with our hypothesis, in that on-demand tracers would revisit their earliest lines first. And another implication is that people adopting the on-demand strategy overall forgot program state more often, which could mean that the on-demand strategy has a greater load on working memory. Either way, a clear implication for design is that programming environments should provide cognitive support for both strategies. For example, showing information about all variables defined before a point as on the left, or showing all later uses of a variable as on the right. For more experiments and discussion, please see our paper. Thank you for listening.